Health News is brought to you by Dynamic Physical Therapy. Call us today to set up a free 15-minute screening with a physical therapist. We've all had a joint pop or crack at some point, and many people crack their knuckles or other joints out of habit. There are many misconceptions about how harmful this practice is, and certain things that everyone should try to avoid. Uh, this is a very, very common question that people generally come in uh, to physical therapy always uh, with a concern, uh, be it postoperatively, which uh, popping and snapping and crepitation is very, very prevalent and is often one of the uh, the most lingering symptoms or symptom complaints after surgery, which is also very normal, uh, to non-operatively, which can be caused by any of the number of factors, which typically all, all of which are, 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 for the most part, very benign. Aaron Maza is a therapist with Dynamic Physical Therapy. He says that there are a variety of causes for joints popping or snapping, but most of them are not cause for concern. Many times it's simply nitrogen changing from a liquid to a gas inside the joint. Your joint is a vacuum. So nitrogen actually changes from a liquid to a gas, and that's a lot of times often what you feel when your joint pops or when you, when you pull on your knuckle. Uh, often other times what can cause is just simple small bone spurs that we get over time that other people would associate with arthritis. Uh, those bone spurs generally over time can cause some rubbing and popping and snapping of tissues. Uh, another cause is usually tight tendons or tight tissues that sit next to each other. If you can visualize, say, two rubber bands um, sitting next to each other, when those rubber bands rub over each other, uh, that will create a popping, snapping sound. All types of people are affected by joints popping or snapping. However, certain demographics may be more susceptible than others. It does affect um, a large number of people in different ways more than others. You know, uh, adolescents, teenagers can have a large deal of uh, hypermobility in a joint, which can cause more joint cavitation, uh, causing uh, nitrogen change from liquid to a gas. That cavitation causes that popping sound. Older generations, older individuals can also have that popping sound because of too little mobility in the joint causing increased friction. It's sometimes considered common knowledge that popping your knuckles or joints leads to arthritis, but that assumption thankfully is not accurate. There is no evidence that supports that cracking your knuckles uh, it causes any uh, progressive onset of arthritis. However, do we encourage people to habitually crack their knuckles and pull on their joints? No, because typically that creates more mobility in the joint and sometimes can lead to hypermobility when we pull and tug at those ligaments. Those ligaments are passive restraints that are there for a purpose. So when we pull and tug and jerk on them habitually, that's not necessarily a great thing either. But the literature does not support that, you know, cracking your knuckles, as one would put it, uh, causes any long-term um, consequence with arthritis. Many people often forcibly crack their back or have other people do this for them to relieve tension. However, therapists like Aaron say that this is best left to the professional therapist. Generally what we worry about with folks that crack their back, so to speak, or, or habitually think that, you know, that jumping up and down or twisting or against a chair cracking their back is long-term beneficial. Uh, even though it does present some short-term gains, uh, you want that done by a properly trained professional. Uh, and even in, even in those hands, we, we, I, generally, I generally tend to discourage my patients from doing that type of treatment over longer periods because, again, those joints are surrounded by passive restraints that when we aggressively mobilize those restraints beyond anatomic barriers, uh, you can create um, instances of hypermobility, which we don't want, particularly in the lumbar spine, which is an area that's created for stability. For My News 26, I'm Kayla Kiley.